And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right here, let's pray. God, you are able. God, we need you right now, God. We need you more than we've ever needed you before, God. God, we ask you, God, to remove all fluff and stuff out of here, God, that we might hear you clearly today, God. God, we need a word that will shift our mindset to trust you and obey you, God. We need a mindset change, God, that will cause us to love you like we did when we first met you, God. Talk to us, God. Speak to us, God. Lead us in the right direction. And we'll be so careful to give you praise, give you glory, and give you honor. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Glory to God. You may be seated. I want to use for a subject and begin our series on this morning, love, commitment, and action. Love, commitment, and action. Love, commitment, and action is in, uh, inseparable. One cannot function without the other. They really are tied at the hip. They need each other not only to survive, but also to prosper. But watch this voice. But when love, commitment, and action are separated, they are ineffective. I'm going to ask, I'm going to choose some ladies from, from, uh, to come up. And so I'm going to ask Deaconess Patricia to come on up real quick. And I'm going to give her this sign, um, this first sign, love. And I'm going to ask her to hold this sign because I want to I give you an illustration. I'm going to have you stand right about here. And so... And so what I, want to, what I want to show is that, watch this now, voices. When love in itself stands alone, it has no power. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. When love in itself stands alone, it's weakened. It has no stability. When love in itself, you know, people say, all I need is just love. If I just get love, that's all I need. No, love won't keep you together. I need you to stay with me now because we're dealing with love, commitment, and, and action. And so if, if it was just love you needed, you'd have stayed in your previous relationship. If it was just love you needed, you'd still be in love with God today. See, love by itself... It's incapable of sustaining itself. That's why love itself is an action word. It has to be attached to something to be, fa uh, uh, to be effective. So stay right there, Deaconess Patricia. So I'm going to ask Deaconess Ava, come forth, and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to have you to come, and I need you to stand right in the center, is because the next thing that we want to deal with today, I want you to see, is the next one is Commitment. And commitment, when commitment is alone and by itself, see this right here, uh, it, it, it has no direction. It has uh, nothing to hold on to. So commitment by itself with no attachment is ineffective. When commitment stands alone, commitment needs to attach to something to be powerful. So that when commitment stands alone and it doesn't have anything to attach to, it'll never stay committed. So that when you tell, when someone tells you they love you without a commitment, it's not going to last. And so it's the commitment. So when it's by itself, it's ineffective because it, has, it needs something to uh, attach to. Deaconess May Jones, I'm going to have you come forward. And I need you to stand on the, on, on the far left is because the last one we're going to deal with in understanding love, commitment, and action is because she's going to represent action because I want you to understand this is how God operates. 
And so now we see that if love stands alone, it's not strong enough to sustain itself. And if commitment stands alone, it's not strong enough because it has nothing to attach itself with. But if action stands alone, the problem with action is it needs purpose. And so if action doesn't have purpose, it aimlessly circles the wagon. It doesn't know where it's going. Action is like the individual who's in the fork in the road. He doesn't know which way to turn. So that when love is by itself, it's ineffective. When commitment is by itself, it's ineffective. And when action is by itself, it's ineffective. But, but I want to show you something. I want you to show, see, I want you to put on the screen for me real quick. Put on the screen while they remain there. Put Ecclesiastics 4 and 12. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. I need you to get this today. Look at the person. A person standing alone can be attacked. Each individual, if they are alone, cannot survive. And it says here, and defeat it. Glory to God. But if two stand back to back, so love, I'm going to ask you to come stand with commitment. But what I need you is go back to back, stand back to back. So turn, yes, yeah, turn that way and get back to back. And so, so it says here, if love and commitment just got together, it says if they stand back to back, they can conquer. They can win any situation they're going through. They can overcome it because love got with commitment. And the two of them get together. Solomon says they can conquer, but glory to God. Solomon says something happens when three of them get together. So I'm going to ask you, Deaconess, may y'all come out just a little bit, come out just a little bit, and I'm going to ask you, go on the other side and get back to back to back. And the word of God says is that, is that when three get together, glory to God, he said that's even better because a three-folded card is what King James says. But right now, New Living says a triple-braided card is not easily broken. So watch this here now. Watch this. Here. This is the thing about it. When love is by itself, it shows its imperfections. When commitment is by itself, it shows its imperfections. When action is by itself, it shows its imperfection. But watch this. But when they get together, they cover each other's areas of weakness. Y'all got to get what I'm saying. Is that you don't know where their weaknesses are because their strengths are being glorified. So, so, so where they are. So I'm, I'm going to ask you guys. Y'all can go and take your seats now. Uh, men, make sure you help them down. Give God some praise for our ladies. I, I want to make sure we understand where we're coming from today. Yeah, you guys can go ahead and sit down. I do want my signs back as well, so yeah. So, so I, I want you to see this in the Word of God. Glory to God. Now, I, I want you to watch this. I want you to watch this now. It's conceivable for a married couple, watch now, to live under one roof in the same house for each and for each one to tell the other that they love them and yet have no commitment in action. Stay with me, stay with me. Even though they're married, they have no zest and zeal in their relationship. Even though they live in the same house, sleep in the same bed, the marriage itself is dead. Stay with me now. Is that they, they've just become roommates. There is no love. There is no intimacy. There is no cuddling. There is no conversation. There is no relationship. They're operating in a dysfunctional state of mind. What? They tell each other they love them. And yet they show no commitment in action. Why? Because love alone can't sustain your marriage. And he said it again, love when it stands by itself. You can tell me all day you love me, but love alone will not sustain your marriage. Stay with me today. God told me to, te that to teach and preach this to somebody today is that he said, if your marriage is not operating in love, commitment, and action, it is going to fail. I don't care how good you look on Sunday morning. 
It's not going to last. Y'all need to hear what I'm saying. You can tell me all day you love me, but if you don't show me, your love is superficial. And so watch this now. Watch this now. It is conceivable for you to come to church and be in the atmosphere where God is. The house of God, a place where God inhabits the praise of a people and yet have no love and commitment in action toward God. It is, it is. Even though you're saved, even though you have a relationship with God as you say, but it's non-existence. Even though uh, you come to church, you pray at night before going to bed and join everyone else in worshiping, your relationship with God is dead. You become a believer who's lost its fire. Stay with me now. There's no love. There's no intimacy. There's no conversation. And there is no relationship. Watch this. It is conceivable that you can tell God you love him. Uh, and yet you don't tithe and give offering. Yet you're not committed to the local church. And yet there's no burning desire that you have. Why? Because love alone will not sustain your relationship with God. You can tell God I love you. You can sing oh, how good you are. and You can do all of these things, but without showing him, love won't sustain your zest and zeal. Love won't do it. Love won't do it. Try it. It won't work. It. Your relationship with God is not operating on love, action, and commitment. Uh, it's going to fail. You can tell God all day you love him, but if you don't show God that you love him, uh, uh, and, and by the things that you do in ministry, it, it's not going to last. Now watch this now. Love is a choice. Love is a choice, so we can choose to love or not to love. Many people think love just kind of happens. It doesn't. Love doesn't just happen, voices. You don't just stumble on love. Oh, I met him and her, and I was in love at first sight. There's no such thing as love at first sight. I know you said it, but it wasn't true. Now, that may be attraction at first sight. There even may be some type of arousal at first sight. But love couldn't have happened at first sight because love must be tested. Oh, y'all, let me talk to you just for a second. Love must be proven. So love can't be at first sight when love itself is action. You couldn't have fallen in love at first sight and you don't know what he or her was about. Is the more they do for you, the more you begin to love them for who they are. Love is not what I say. Love is what I do. And so, why? Because love, 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 love is not emotion. Love is action. Look what 1 John 3.18 says. This is a New Living Translation. So you'll understand what I'm saying. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by what? Our actions, because the Word of God understands that love by itself can't sustain itself. So if your marriage uh, at home is just based on love, it's not going to last. If your marriage with God is just based on love, it's not going to last. It's impossible for love alone to sustain itself. It needs a commitment. It needs action to be able to do its job. Love may be the pillar that you, that you start with, but you, it's not the fuel to keep it going. And so you got to get this. So, so, so attraction can lead to love, but, it can, but, but you cannot force someone to love you. Love is a choice we make, you know. In weddings I've done, Deaconess Adrian Ware, you know, my wedding planner and all of those things that she does and she helps with all that and how many weddings are, and we've done and, and, and all this. And at the wedding, you know, in the, in, in the vows, it says, uh, I, Craig, take the crystal to my wedded wife to have and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to tell death do us part. Watch this now. I choose you. For the rest of my life, I choose you. I just don't say it, but I choose you through a commitment. Good, bad, indifference, I choose you. 
If I just love you, it's not going to last. But if I choose you, it's going to strengthen my relationship so you can't force somebody to love you, fall in love with you, and you can't force them to stay in love with you. So once again, love is a choice. This is exactly what Deuteronomy is saying. Look at Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Look what it says here. Today I've given you the choice. God doesn't force you to love him. I'm giving you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. Watch this. Oh, God, I love this. God has given us a choice to make a decision on whether or not we're going to love him. God doesn't force us to love him. He gives us a choice. We have to choose to love God. It's not going to just happen because I show up to church. Just because you show up to church doesn't make you fall in love with God. Love is a choice. I got to make a conscious decision to fall in love with God. It is a choice he's telling us right now. Glory to God. That is not God's criteria of what love is to him. God said, if, God said, if that were God's criteria to love him, everybody in the church would qualify. No, God says, God says, God's criteria are and shall always be love, commitment, and action. God will never show you his love without showing you his commitment and action. God will never tell you he loves you without showing you. God will never tell you he loves you without covering you in the blood. He will never tell you he loves you without protecting you in your household. He'll never tell you he loves you and not make a way for you out of no way. He'll never tell you he loves you and not be there when you're going through trials and tribulations. God's love is always filled with commitment and action. When you quit committing and showing action in your relationship, there will be no love. There'll be, there'll be no love. Oh, glory to God. Look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. What did he do? He gave the best thing that ever happened for him. He gave. His only begotten son that whosoever believing in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That scripture got love, it's got commitment, and it's got action. God committed to us. And he showed it by giving the best thing in his life. He'll never tell us he loves us without showing us. I need somebody to get this. Oh, glory to God. How can you not commit to a God when he loves you through your own mess? How can you not tithe and give offering when God looked beyond your fault and saw your need? How can you not love a God who loves you unconditionally? Can I talk to somebody just for a moment? How can you not commit to a God who's committed to you regardless of the circumstances you've gone through in your life? Even when you turn your back on him, he was there when you turned back around. How can you not show action and love and obedience and submissive when God covered you in the blood? How can you not praise God, not just with your hands, but with your mind, your spirit, and your soul? How can you not give God the glory when you think about all that God has done for you? How can you not bless the Lord at all times? How can you not have the fruits of the lips on your spirit? How can you not bless him? When God's been better to us than we've been to him, how can you not? Can y'all touch about three people around you and say, all God wants from you is love, commitment, and action. Oh, glory to God. My God, my God, my God. God is not going to force us to love him. But he's going to encourage you to choose your choice wisely. God said the choice that you choose is going to have impact on your destination. 
The choice that you choose is going to be whether or not you live your life in earth, living your best life now. The life, the choice that you choose, whether you're going to prosper, whether you're going to suffer, but it's going to be your decision. Don't blame mama them. Don't blame daddy them. Don't blame your circumstance. Don't blame you didn't have a father growing up. Don't blame you when you grew up in the hood. It's going to be your choice you choose. Don't let where you grow up from affect what's going to happen the rest of your I need somebody to give God some praise. Oh, glory, I'm in the right place today. Glory to God. God said it's the key to your life. Glory to God. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look, look at Deuteronomy 30 and 20. I'm almost done. Look at Deuteronomy 30 and 20. Look what God says. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God. Look. Obeying him. Look. And committing yourself firmly to him. Notice he didn't stop with love. Because love can't sustain you. God will never tell you to love and love him alone. Because he understands love can never stand alone. It has to be attached to something. So God says, he says, you can make this choice by loving your God. And if you love me, you obey me. And if you obey me, you will commit to me. He said, this is the key to your life. This is the key. My God. You're struggling because you ain't doing these three. You think you're loving God, but you ain't doing these three. Oh, for you to love God, oh, for love to work, it has to be attached to commitment and action. Look at John 14 and 15. Look what he said. See, if you love me, it can't stand by itself. Keep my commandments. He's always telling you, your love is not what you say to me. Your love is your action. Oh, your love is your action. Oh, love is your action. God knows if you just love God without commitment and action, your love for God will eventually fade. Y'all got to hear this. Y'all got somebody got to get this. Love without God and commitment is infatuation. In other words, you're fooling yourself. You get dressed up every Sunday morning. You come in church every Sunday morning, and, and you look in the part, and you're fooling yourself if you love God without a commitment. That's why God said, if you love me, then you keep my commandments. That's why God created a covenant between you and us, between him and us. The covenant is God said, I'll do my part if you do your part. Love can't be the only string is because love won't last. Love won't last. It's, uh, many believers in church have mistaken their infatuation with God's love. To be infatuated, it means my passion, watch this here, is short-lived. But to be in love means my passion is death do us part. So to love someone, watch this now, oh glory to God, you must constantly stay engaged. If you have love without commitment and action, you've lost the engagement. You walk around the house and you're not talking and you're not, you're not, you're not intimate, you just love each other, but there's no engagement, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fool's gold real soon. Somebody else is going to love your man, your woman better than you did. It's fool goals for you to go around the house telling folk you love them, but you show no action. You show no intimacy. You show no love. You show no compassion. You show none of those things. God said love by itself won't sustain your marriage. That's why the church is, uh, is, is in dysfunction. It's because there's more divorce in church than it is in the world. It's because we think if I just get saved and married, I'll sustain myself. But love is universal. It transcends. It's no matter whether you're saved or unsaved, you're going to have to commit something to it. Just what God is saying to us. There needs to be intimacy. There needs to be cuddling. There needs to be small talk. There needs to be laughter. There needs to be tears when love is real. Oh, can I help somebody real quick? When God is your boo.
you're whining and dying in him. Can I talk to somebody right now just for a while? When God is your boo, you're listening to his every word. You're daydreaming about him. You can't even concentrate through the day thinking about how good God has been to you. When God is your boo, he's got you all twisted up in the game. You start tithing. You start coming to church on a regular basis. You start giving your life to Christ. When you think about the goodness of God, you got to shout, cry, give God praise every time you think about it. When God is your boo, just the mention of his name got you blushing. Am I talking to somebody right now when God is your boo? When you understand who God is in your life, God, you get angry when somebody talk about your boo. You ready to fight somebody when they talk about your boo. You ready to, you ready to take off earrings, you ready to take off, off the jacket, the shoes. You can talk about everybody, but don't talk about my boo. When you in love with somebody, you will defend them. You won't talk about them, but you'll fight for your destiny. Who am I talking to? It's God is your boo in here. You ought to give God some praise. Oh God, glory to God. Oh God, God, God. Oh God, God. Y'all sit down, I gotta tell you something. God told me to tell you something. God told me to tell somebody something. I gotta tell you something. I want you to hear this very clearly. That's why uh, there are many marriages that fail. Not because, y'all got to get this, they don't love each other. No, no, that's probably 90% of the marriages that fail. Not because they don't love each other. It's that they can't no longer live with each other. That's why you oftentimes find after the marriage they become friends again <laughs> when they're dealing with children. Because it wasn't that, it they, wasn't that love, it was that living. That's why, that's why, that's why, whether in Hollywood or whether in your church, you see these all so familiar words, irreconcilable differences. And when you go look up the definition of irreconcilable differences, it means no party was at fault. <laughs> they just don't know why they divorced. Well, it's because it was no intimacy. It was no love. It was no cuddling. It was no small talk. It was none of those things. And so when you try to sustain your relationship off of just love, I just told you, when it's by itself, it's not going to last. Now infidelity sneaks in. Now adultery sneaks in. Now fornication sneaks in. Now all these things sneaks in because you stop doing what you used to do when you were dating. And the reason why you're in church, but you're just in church. And you just love God. You just love God. I just love God but you stop doing the things you used to do. You here. God knows you're here. But you don't color with him anymore. You don't kiss him like you used to. You don't tell him how much he means to you anymore. You don't show it through your action. And God said, you here, but you lost the first love. Oh, let me just show you. Go to Revelations 2. Look at verse 4. I'm reading from the Good News translation. It's the GNT. Look what God told the church. But this is what I have against you. You do not love me now as you did at first. Glory to God. Think how far you have fallen. Turn from your sins. And watch. Do what you did at first. God said, when you first fell in love with me, we talked often, we cuddled, we kissed each other. In the middle of the night, if you woke, you told me I was the best thing that ever happened to you. God said, when you first fell in love with me, you held my hand, you rubbed my feet, you fed me with best china, and I, now I meals on paper plates every night. God said, when you first fell in love with me, you used to sing to me and tell me how wonderful I was. And now I can barely get you to say, thank you, Jesus. 
God said, when you first fell in love with me, you was the first one to ride and the last one to leave. And now you're the last one to come and the first one to leave. God said, I don't know what has happened. God said, when you first fell in love with me, we had date night every Wednesday night and prayer breakfast every Sunday morning, and I can't get you to come to church anymore. God said, when you first fell in love with me, you brought me gifts, you brought me frankincense, you brought me cologne, you brought me perfume, you adorn yourself, you dress yourself, you smell yourself. Now I can't get you to give me a tithe and give me an offering. Now I can't get you to give me a praise. I can't get you to worship me. God said, what has happened to our relationship? You love me, but that's no commitment. That's no action connected to it. God said, you love me, but I don't see your love. God said, just do what you did first and watch I blow your mind. Just do what you did first and watch I make a way out of no way. Just do what you did first and watch I come and rescue you from every trial you've ever been through. Just do what you did first. When you used to think about me all day and praise me all day and tell me how good I was all day and couldn't wait to bless me all day, just do what you did first. Love me unconditional and watch I make you the king and queen that you ought to be. Commit to me with your whole heart and watch I give you the world at your feet. God say, show me with the action that you love me and I'll give you favor like you've never seen before. I need somebody to give God some praise. Love, commitment, and action is what God desires from us. Love, commitment, and action will cause us to live our best lives now. Love, commitment, and action is my choice, God, in serving you. It's love, it's commitment, and action. Y'all do me a favor. I need y'all to make the devil angry up in here right now. Can y'all get on your feet right now and, and find five people right now? High five them and say, you know what? I got to have love, commitment, and action if I'm going to be in a relationship with God. Y'all tell somebody. I got to have love, commitment, and action if I'm going to be in a relationship with God. I got to have love, commitment, and action if I'm going to stay in my marriage. I got to have love, commitment, and action if I'm going to keep my friends around me. I got to have love, commitment, and action if I'm going to do what God expects me to do. If you receive that, give God the best praise you can give God. The doors of the church are open.